listening to Flop Culture, a podcast where I speak to an esteemed guest about their favourite flop. I'm your host, Fanula. I hope you're well. Please come join us over on social media. It's at Flop Culture underscore pod on Instagram and TikTok. Also, don't forget to leave a rating or review wherever you're listening. Helps people find the show, which is really good. And just a reminder, we are over on Patreon with some bonus content. Or if you want to support the future of the show, that's also welcomed. It's two, minimum two episodes a month. Lots of good content already there if you want to catch up on the back catalogue. You can. So you can go do that at patreon.com forward slash flop culture. As I mentioned, I'm out of the country for a little while, but I'm still determined to bring you flops. This one, potentially one of my favourite ones of the season. I feel like I keep saying that, but maybe it's just a really good season. I don't know. The guests have, they've brought me the goods this year, I have to say. I'm very grateful and I'm very excited to get into this week's flop. Martial arts and Ireland. Generally speaking, those are not three words that are usually seen together, which is probably why James P. Bennett wanted to make Fatal Deviation in the first place. Bennett was one martial arts enthusiast with a Dunstores club card and a dream to bring together the highest calibre of Irish actors like Mikey Graham from Boyzone and bring martial arts to the Irish mainstream. Unfortunately, a myriad of bizarre creative choices and financial struggles meant the film didn't quite make it there but what it did achieve was a cult following. Joining me to discuss Fatal Deviation is writer, podcaster and comedian Hugh Kerr. Hugh Kerr, it is a pleasure to have you on Flop Culture. How are you doing? I'm very, Woo! very good. Oh, oh my no, God, we have I'm... actually an audience today. We don't usually have that. So you're getting yeah, like I a nice little like round of applause I'm there. I'm performing to a crowd now. Yeah. Whatever. now it's a massive crowd. Now you can't see it on camera, but there are thousands of people yeah. packed inside the studio. They're just all very polite. Thousands yeah. of people called Adam and Luke. <laughs> <laughs> they like it and listen to them. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah, no, I'm flying, man. I'm actually great. Um, Delighted. Yeah, I'm very, very happy to have you here. I've been threatening it for a very long time and then they emailed you and they just didn't email you for ages. And then I think I, we were throwing down words on No mm. Encore. Uh, yes. The podcast for boys, famously. For Flop th- culture podcast for the girls. Listen, um, I, I have to do both sides. So I always come out on top. You have um, to keep Dave Henry happy and all like just... <sighs> I understand. Yeah, exactly. I've been there. I've been there. He's a hard man to please. Oh, truly, truly. <laughs> anyway, enough Dave had any, like smack dog. Uh, the text I'm going to get now. Oh my God. Anyway, Hugh, you're here to talk flaps. What mm-hmm. did you pick to talk about this week? It was tough to pick a flap. It was tough to focus down on one single flap. But the one that I chose was one that I hold very near and dear to my heart, uh, which was Fatal Deviation, which is a 1999 Kung Fu film, which was set in the very exotic location of Trim in County Meath. Uh, And it was done as this sort of vehicle for this guy called uh, James Bennett, uh, or Jimmy Bennett, or James P. Bennett, as he puts himself in the directing scene, as you see at the start of the film, where it's like directed by James J. P. Bennett, starring James Bennett. Uh, very subtle in trying to be like, no, it's definitely not me. No, no, no. It's uh, giving guy incognito as we were, we've, there were a lot of Simpsons references before we started recording. It's oh, very much that. It's incredible to see the, the, the amount of grind this man put in to get this film done. Um, because I don't know, did you see that he did, there was like a nationwide interview about it before it came out? No. It is fan. Fantastic. I'll link it in the show notes for anyone who wants to watch. He's going to send it to me and everyone can enjoy it, including you, me. You absolutely should because what I didn't realise, so I've watched this film, I would say upwards of 30 times. Okay. Um, and the whole time I'm like, this is hilarious. This like lad who thinks that this is going to be like this huge star making role. And this, you know, we you kind of imagine, you don't think about what age people are when they make this. Mm. This man was 22 when he was making this. So like... I'm 26, like, and, you know, I did some pretty embarrassing, I've made some pretty embarrassing content, I mm. won't lie. Listen, we, I've owned a Twitter account for the last 12 years. Yep. Even just owning a Twitter account is pretty embarrassing in itself yep. now at this point. was going to say. Uh, but I never in my life made anything as impactful or as as complex as Fatal Deviation. And I'm just, and just s- starstruck and spellbound by this man's ability to make something just so bad. I can't believe he was 22. Like, he looked like he came out of the womb with, like, a 45-year-old head on him. Like, even in this, he looks, like, fully... Like, that's kind of shaken me to my 
actual core. Looks, what if I had, I didn't achieve anything at 22? This <laughs> man has achieved fatal deviation, which I'd never watched before this podcast. Mm-hmm. Incredible. You, you missed I out. was laughing. It's very quintessentially Irish. It's nostalgic. Mm. Jimmy's really hot. It, the Do action scenes so? are, it's, oh, it's, I loved it. I loved it. Do you think he looks hot in it? Yeah, but in kind of a freaky way. <laughs> I don't know, he's so, he's so ripped and he's wearing like this, the teeniest vest I've ever seen. I don't know, the scene at the end after the bloopers where he's like real flexing towards the camera, that was terrifying. But yeah, I had in my notes, I was like, I think I'm attracted to him. I think I'm really attracted to him. Um, but anyway, what is this film about for anyone who's unfamiliar and is just had to listen to me be like, yeah, the man in it is really hot and he wears really small vests. It's so much more than that, you. What's feel, it about? I feel like you're, we're not completely grabbing and grasping at everything. He kind of looks like we were trying to look up what he looked like or trying to imagine what he looked like. And he looks like uh, Damien Dempsey on the cover of his Best Of album, <gasps> if you ever see. Yes. He looks a bit like that. Yeah. But even more ripped yeah. somehow. But also, did you ever play the PlayStation game uh, Worms Armageddon? Yes. Also kind of like one of the worms. Is that what I mean? Anyway, <laughs> moving on. What is... If you see if you see it, you know. If you know, you know, right? The, the, moving the, on. The girls who get it, get it. The girls, and, the girlies who get it, get it. And the girls who don't, don't. Don't. What is the movie about, Hugh? Tell me quickly. <laughs> the film itself is about uh, this man, J- Jimmy, who mm. appears, Jimmy Bennett. So one thing, amazing thing about the film is that everyone uses their real name Incredible. as their characters, which makes you imagine that like, this is like versions of themselves. So that the star of a boy, Irish boy band, uh, Boy Zone, that Mikey Graham is actually just like this at some point because he plays one of the main villains in the All film. All biographical, like for everyone. Listen, he actually did get his neck snapped at the end in the 90s. I mean, spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen the film. But that actually happened to Mikey Graham uh, and his recovery was incredible. Um, but the film itself is about uh, Jimmy Bennett, who has been away for 10 years, uh, learning the art of kung fu and mastering everything and he comes back to his hometown of Trim in County Meath to not only become the greatest kung fu master because everyone knows that that is the centre of uh, kung fu in the world honestly Hong Kong who is she and has to find out who murdered his dad as well it's every single martial arts trope you've ever heard of shoved through like a Glen Row lens, basically. It's just like the most, it's like, what if like, you know, Mick Lally was then able to just like (laughs) do roundhouse kicks to sort all of his problems out. This is basically what the whole film is about. But it opens up with like these credits uh, where it again is like saying like, trying to pretend like he didn't direct the film himself. But there was also someone else who directed it that I uh, didn't notice because it's not actually in the credits themselves, but it's in like the Wikipedia article and stuff. But it's like a former Irish Olympic bobsledder. Yeah, because when I went to look this up, right, I was like, and you know, you see the Wikipedia and the name's blue. You're like, okay, another person of note. They Nepo have, baby. Yeah, they've, or <laughs> Nepo Baby, or like they've gone on to do some other movies or whatever, right? So I click it. It's Simon Lynchard is yeah. his name. And it's uh, he's directed it. Simon Lynchard is an Irish bobsledder. He competed in the two-man and the four-man events at the 1998 Winter Olympics. Lynch had later became the owner of a greetings card company in Dublin. End. End. That's, what? That's it. Sorry? That's all you're getting. That's all you know. That's all you're allowed but to I, know. I appreciate it because he said, you know what? I created the perfect film. I don't need to do it again. I need well, to go bobsledding and well, <laughs> I need to go people greeting once cards. Once you peaked at Fatal Deviation, it's all downhill. Yeah, truly. Much like, like when you go on a bobsled. <laughs> It was the only way that he could deal with it was to be like, I need to only know being at the highest point of my life in every single thing. And then to be making greeting cards as well. I wonder if you go there, are there Fatal Deviation themed (gasps) greeting cards there? He's missing a trick if not. Absolutely. Listen, thinking of Foo, maybe. (laughs) I don't know. That could be, that could be what I, listen, I would happily pay for uh, a card that said maybe for like an in, in memoriam card or something like that like a mass card but it's all the characters from Fatal Deviation that, that get cleared out of it all the random like boys that fight in the tournament and like the all the gang lads like the what the he- they just kept multiplying like I was like who are all these men where are they go- what is their purpose why don't they have jobs and why don't why are some of them not wearing clothes like, um, very strange very strange uh, when was the first time you watched this thing because 
you said you're 26, this was out in 1999, that would have made you a very small child, same mm-hmm. with me, I'm also very young. Mm-hmm. Um, so when did you watch this first? My first experience of it was, I think it was 2018 is when I found out about it through a Twitter thread where someone posted being like, this is the most insane thing I've ever seen. Um, and I think the one bit that stood out to me was there's a film, a kung fu film in the 90s uh, set and trim where Mikey from Boyzone does cocaine while using a Dunn Store's loyalty card. Brilliant. Sold. <laughs> and I was like, every word in that <laughs> sentence got so much better as I read it. And I was like, we need to find out where this film is. And the whole thing's on YouTube. The whole thing's for free on YouTube. Someone like ripped it off the, the VHS, whatever. So and grateful to whoever that person is. Oh my God. I wonder what were the, you remember when like videotapes would have trailers at the start of them? Yeah. I wonder what were the ones that were at the start, like the Disney, like you were watching Disney VHS. <laughs> Check out Fatal Deviation coming what up next. E- what even fits with this? Like whatever, like you know the the commitments <laughs> trailer right before <laughs> two rocking films or whatever. Truly, true, two absolute classics. Yeah, so that was the, the thread, and then it became a thing where me and my mates in college, so with the film society in UCD, we would watch it like religiously. Basically, I think there was like a there was a period between September and December where I think I watched that film maybe three times a week in the film sock office and we were remixing it we were doing like slow down versions of it we were doing sped up versions of it setting the Inception soundtrack to some of the scenes <laughs> when he's like running out of the bathtub naked or whatever with time <laughs> playing by Hans Zimmer um, there was lots of like I've seen this so many times um, and it's then kind of like I love bad films like really really terrible films like I listened to the Sharknado episode and I was like a classic absolutely uh, I love Sharknado oh burn, my god burn. go back and listen to that if you haven't listened to it Leon Drop so funny so so funny Like, but I always loved this then to know that there was one in Ireland I was like I have to watch this I have to and then it became a personality trait basically for like three months obsessed who else do we meet in the film then you mentioned Jimmy Jimmy's kind of like the central character he goes back to the town but he, meets this other merry gang of people he has a love interest uh, listen it has absolutely anything you want it, it, has, it has everything action romance boy zone um <laughs> A really random, I don't remember, I don't, there's a song that plays over and over again in it as well. Which is oh, like I was going to ask you this because it's so jovial in parts where it's not really uh-huh. jovial at all. Love and survive, we gotta <laughs> die. Huh? Love and survive. I was like, that, this is going to be running through my head now for the next like five years completely. Uh, there's lots of other interesting, so when he comes back, the first person to hear about it is uh, the local crime land uh, boss because famously Trim has a, a a a serious problem with gangs running the place. But Trim is a mafia, like fair play. Listen, whatever the the, the Trimios or whatever you would call them, <laughs> whatever you would call them, the Trimiosos. You stop the mead, people are going to get on to me. They're going to be so cross. <laughs> That's them come after me. Listen, <laughs> I, I, by all accounts, according to this film, they're not very good at their job. <laughs> true, very so, true. So I'll take it. But the the person who murdered his father or whatever is then revealed, and um, as I, this crime land boss but Jimmy doesn't know that yet and Jimmy doesn't know that yet but the the thing about it is the actor who plays him is not an actor he's a local solicitor in the town <laughs> that they were like he was like I'll pay for this film if you let me be in it and you can really tell that he's like as much as the acting in the film is not the best this man stands out as like a really like we've just let our dad in to, <laughs> to, to say a few lines here he would, like the first third of the movie he's looking directly at the camera like yes. it's just I was like man you're not supposed to be looking at me you need to be looking off to the left off to the right you've business to be doing he's inc- that makes so much sense that he's mm. just like Jimmy down the road like literally I, th- I think it was quite avant-garde actually I think it was really it really put you in the in the like there's not many films that let you stand through look through the eyes of Mikey Graham from Boyzone Johnny uh, Murray is his name he's main monk yes so he's like head honcho yeah. he's, the, the, he's the boy that, to, to look out for shout uh, out Johnny Murray we love you shout, shout out to the boy yeah but uh, and his son is Mikey Graham in Boyzone who we were talking about this before is actually not doing too bad he as an actor. is in terms of acting performances he is definitely one of the Strongest, and that's not a sentence I ever expected to say about Mikey Graham ever on this earth. Like, he is, you said it before we started recording, he is like chewing the scenery in a massive way, but mm-hmm. because everyone else is so bad, mm-hmm. it kind of makes him look good. Like, he's yeah. really committed to being the baddie and like the shit boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And 
You were, I, lo- I loved it. I kind of found it endearing, to be honest. You were so close to accidentally quoting the film there. An, exa- an exact quote that Mikey Graham says, where he's like, you made me look bad and that's not good. <laughs> the dialogue is just fantastic. And that is now... Another rub- greeting card, but like reverse it. Oh yeah, of course. You made me-, me look good and that's not bad. Oh Happy my- birthday. <laughs> Sorry about your cat. <laughs> Sorry about your cat. Sorry for your loss. Sorry for your loss. Happy anniversary. <laughs> they can make it work, I'm sure. Again, Absolutely. I'm sure he's listening. Oh, 100%. Listen, to to, to Simon Lynchfield. <laughs> get Lynchfield, whatever your name is, get it in there. So then we meet our love interest, which is in a local Landis, which I don't know how many times Landis is actually featured in cinematic history. I don't know if Martin Scorsese ever thought to be like, yeah, we need to set this in a Landis. Or we need he to, should. Like, like, he should consider that for future. And this is the perfect... The perfect example of this, like Nicola stuck in the fry lights. Mm. Beautiful. Like I wanted to live there. I was just felt so warm and nostalgic. Despite the mayhem that is going on in the shop, talk to me a little bit about that. Like where do we find ourselves when we meet Nicola? We meet her in the middle of this incredible scene of two lads who are very clearly like in their 40s. Like I cannot emphasize enough how old these lads look. And they look like 90s old as well because I mean, I feel like old people. <laughs> old. old. Well, do you know what I mean though? Like like old people now, this is going to sound so bad because there's going to be people like that are like in their like 40s and 50s or whatever that are like listening to this and being like, this. what do you mean I look old? But like as in like <laughs> When people looked old back then, they didn't have a lot to like cover it up with or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there, there was no trips to Turkey. There was no, uh, you know, handy wigs. There was no like, I don't know what old people do. Um, <laughs> but there was no way to like hide it. So these lads are just like comb overs, like receding hairlines and everything like that. But they're acting like they're like 16 year olds. They have children they need to be raising, but they're acting like the children that they should be raising. Like they're eating donuts. They're just like being menaces in the shop. My personal favourite one is when they, he grabs like a little bottle of water and he sprinkles a little bit into his mouth. <laughs> and he's like, hee 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 And his friend like, give me that or whatever. And then sprinkles a little bit in his mouth, whatever. But that's it. No one is making any sort of an actual mess, except for maybe when he's like throwing eggs around or something like that mm. or whatever, which is a bit annoying. There's also, uh, they steal a shopping cart off uh, an aisle fella and he just looks mildly peeved. He doesn't look... <laughs> in any way like really annoyed about it he's just like oh, oh, oh imagine oh, someone oh. comes up and takes their shopping like you'd be more than a bit annoyed like surely <laughs> Here, that's my carbonara but you can't <laughs> get that back like for god's sake it's uh, so silly but then they approach Nicola who is our beautiful love interest mm. in this film and do you know what she's looking well That's she how is, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll say this much whatever as much as you thought that James B. Bennett was hot I was like do you know what Nicola in the Landis outfit I was like you know yeah. I'd stack a your shelves a great gal would have loved to have seen her arc explored a bit more but do you know, I don't think they're really focusing too much on uh, I don't know if this film passes the Bechdel test no I, 100% <laughs> I could say that with confidence right now it does not because I don't think there are two women I'd oh. like Where's the second one? No, oh. they do. there is one scene. Oh, sorry. There's loads of women at the fight scene. We'll come back to it. Sorry. Yes, but no, anyway, sorry. yeah. Okay. I still don't think I've passed the back uh, Yeah. Anyway. There is one conversation between two women and then being like, look, it's James Bennett. And that's it. That's the Okay, that's well the, then, because it's a conversation about a man, it doesn't count. Exactly. Anyway, sorry. she's working in the shop. She's trying to work in the shop and these two lads are being really, really irritating. She was working as a clerk in a Londis bar uh, when <laughs> he met her. She met Jimmy Bennett, yeah. <laughs> Uh, these boys are like, oh, we're going to knock over your towels and we're going to knock over your like uh, toilet roll and it's going to crack. And she's like, please don't do that. That's the one thing I don't want you to do. And they were pure annoying or whatever. And then James Bennett in his tight jeans and like blue shirt appears out of nowhere and says one of my favourite lines in cinematic history, which is, you're a very brave man to be bothering a woman like that. And then karate kicks your man through the toilet roll, which is the one thing she didn't <laughs> want to happen. And she explicitly says, she's like, if you knock that down, you're going to have to rebuild it. Mm-hmm. But then Jimmy comes over, cha-cha-cha. <laughs> like, she's like, it's fine, I'm horny for you now. Which I understand because the elegance of, like the extensions of the legs. Proper. Sorry, I can't read you because I'm wearing Crocs. Uh, I, but, you, you know, no, you free, I mean? like, no free the feet. Toy, <laughs> yeah, no free feet. But the toe points are just like, it's... This movie, as much as it is a piss take, it gave me such an appreciation for martial arts. What a beautiful fighting style sport. I don't know what you call it. It was incredible. He really puts the art in martial arts. True. There you go. Fantastic. There you go. The, but my favourite thing about that scene as well is that he kicks your man and he keeps his foot up in the air and then he brings it around here. I'm about to give this camera a full show. But he gives, he gives, <laughs> he gives the man, like he like brings the leg around as if it's like a cocked gun like over to his head. That's what I'm saying. It's just... 
It's perfect. Black Swan could never. But honestly. thus begins their Nicola and Jimmy's love story. They mm-hmm. don't really see each other. I think they meet again. They're, she's walking down a road or something and she's getting harassed again. Once which is again, by lads. Like, what, is she all right? Like, just... What has she she's been having doing? no luck. What has she been doing that is making people just harass her? Are she's she going gang? out with Mikey from Boys on, on again, off again. Doesn't mm. want to live with him. He's like, please live with me. She's explicitly like, no, not really. And then, then all the lads are like hassling her to get with him. I don't yeah. know. So then Jimmy has to once again come and save the day. At the car. And he absolutely clatters these boys outside. Like proper, some of the film is like really like violent or whatever, like bashing heads and stuff and like kicking a boy over a wall and all that's going to crack. Like really, really violent. And then they go to see the, the mob boss and the camera cuts to him and he looks directly into the camera and he's like, what the fuck? Happened. <laughs> it's and, so good. And That's like, another greeting card. Someone gets pregnant. What the, the fuck, fuck happened? What, and it's just a picture of him. What the fuck happened? He literally Perfect. is, his acting is just ridiculous. But also, yes. I feel like we're also forgetting that there's a thing where uh, during that fight scene, during the him outside the car, there's a, a little a little hint, a little like MCU style uh, kind of tease for the monk the guy who trains him. Yes, I'm sorry, I should correct myself here because I the main monk I said is Johnny Murray who I was mixing up with the head henchman person. That was actually Michael Regan mm-hmm. if you need any soliciting needs. I'm not <laughs> sure if he's still working. But get on to him, don't get on to Johnny Murray because he strictly plays monks in movies. <laughs> yeah, what? So, so there's this whole, okay, so it's kind of following similar enough like martial arts movies tropes and mm-hmm. that it's like the dad died I have to go back and avenge my dad and like I'm really good at some type of martial arts so like and I'm just throwing showing that around you have the love story but then you have this layer of like magic where these monks are hanging around Trim again watching (laughs) Jimmy kind of flail about like sometimes murdering people if not like really violently injuring them Mm -hmm. going on dates with Nicola so then the monks are just kind of lurking watching because they know something about him that he doesn't. What's what's going on there, Hugh? Well, the first introduction Explain to them... Explain in simple terms. In simple terms. Uh, the first introduction to them is this real slow zoom of your man just standing in a forest while he's like fighting your boys in the car. So he just looks like a pervert. Just, <laughs> just like... We like, don't know that he's not a pervert, in fairness. Listen, there's nothing, there's nothing to prove or disprove that this man is We don't is get pervert. enough time with his character and we haven't gotten a monk spin-off yet, so... <laughs> Fingers Not crossed. Yet. Listen, I'm telling you, hopefully it'll explore his kinks. Uh, <laughs> that's what a film oh about fit alleviation needs, whatever. It's just, Truly, not, yeah. it's just not sexual enough. Yeah. But basically the story with the monks is that they are, uh, you know, this school of kung fu monks, again, in trim, that trained uh, Jimmy's dad. And his acting as well is probably one of the not the best performances in this film which is a bit sad because he's just like that's what your father said to me whenever I was it was like the most it was like if you put a trim accent through like a muffler or something like that where you can barely kind of hear what he's saying but it's it's like he's talking through his beard it's like the hair has grown over his mouth (laughs) and that all you can hear is just little bits like a tree like just literally like tree beard in Lord of the Rings yeah Yeah, if they just brought him out there and uh, made him into a real person and then was like, we're also going to teach you how to do Kung Fu. Uh, which, and we kind of already touched on this or whatever. Some of the like things that your man is doing is actually pretty impressive because immediately after that, there's like a cleaning montage. I don't know if you remember this, this is a bit where he's like cleaning around the house where it's just like suddenly like, I think he's getting ready for if your one arrives. Sorry, vaguely. Yeah, I think I actually have my notes that it's like home makeover show, question mark. I like... said Kung Fu Kim and Aggie. That's... <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah that brilliant. was kind of. It was kind of. But then, uh, and also that's when. Uh, but some of the strategies he's doing. There's a bit where he does like that because, and he says it in the nationwide interview, which I feel like is such a funny source to get like loads of information about this film. But that he basically wanted to be Jean Claude Van Damme. Like he actually wanted to be him. Like and there are are like directors and stuff working on them and like stunt coordinators. I say stunt coordinators, but being like. Uh, yeah, we had to retrain his mind to become like Van Damme. We needed to make this man into the Irish Van Damme. But he's doing all the stretches and he's doing everything like that's um, that you're able to pull off. Mm. And then Nicola returns with an apple tart. Incredible. Which is... Yeah, I have written down. She drops over a tart and he's practicing in the smallest vest I've ever seen. And it's like, <laughs> can I see you again? I don't know. Can you? It's giving like Barry's tea ad. Like it's... <laughs> The sexual tension is so palpable, but also 
not palpable at all. Like it's just, and then what she leaves and he runs out to the road and he's like, wait, to try and talk to her again. It's just like their dates get, they're so unhinged. Like they go on several picnic dates, which the establishing shots kind of lead you to believe that they're in some kind of gorgeous meadow. The camera pulls out, they're fully on the side of a road. They're on the side of a road. They're like feeding each other fruit. Like it's, and they're, and, they're, and, they're, and like there's at one point, it's assumed that they're on like their third or fourth date and Jimmy turns to her and he's like, so tell me about yourself. <laughs> like, babe, we are so far past that. Surely now at this point, like. Imagine he was just like, man, this is great. What's your name? Sorry. <laughs> what are you, what is it you again? Actually, uh, oh. It's like he, he just starts calling her Landis. <laughs> it's like I don't know if you've Landis seen Landis Lady. Landis Lady. Have you seen that clip of Pat Kenny on the Late Late? Whenever uh, Mattress Mick was on the show, no. He like oh gets... sorry, yeah, and he calls him Mattress. <laughs> so Mattress. So, so I'm just Mattress. Like, so Landis. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about yourself, please. Oh my uh, no, god! No, those dates are. Hilarious. But listen, have you never been on a date on the like on the R eight five two outside of uh, you know outside of like Bala Buffet? I'm or racking like my brain here. No, no, I haven't. Maybe that's why I haven't been on very many successful dates. Is there you I go. Have. You take a girl to the side of the M fifty. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> See that car? That's me. <laughs> Oh my God. Anyway, their relationship progresses, but it causes some consternation among this crime gang. Because mm-hmm. as I mentioned, she is going out with Mikey from Boyzone, who is the head honcho's mm-hmm. son. He gets wind of this, so he's basically six the lads on him to yes. like kill him. But they also know that like, they know about his dad and the history with his dad. And they know that they killed his dad. Yes. He, Jimmy doesn't Mm -hmm. but at one point they're also like well we could just like hire him into the gang and there's a really I'm sure you have this line do you have this line or I might have it written down where it's like uh, they're on about like recruiting him because he's Mm -hmm. back in town whatever as part of their crime posse and your man says dead guy says wouldn't it be ironic to have the fella whose dad I killed working for us and, and it's like, delivered so straightly it's it's directly to the camera it's, it's perfect it's always like wouldn't it be ironic <laughs> if the man that I killed his son was where it's absolutely listen it's so good I, give him the Oscar I actually don't understand why <gasps> he hasn't been in any more films truly but then they bring up the, the Baltania tournament which is you know I like a bit of Irish language representation and everything absolutely uh, listen, yeah. as uh, my one personality trait is that I get as much Irish language stuff into anything that I can yeah um, but they never explain it, but they just say that they're like, if we win the tournament, we take control of the town, which is a bit weird. It's like if the Rose of Tralee, like whoever won it then, was just got given free reign of Kerry then. For but it's like- also if the Rose of Tralee was a bare knuckle boxing competition <laughs> that everyone was really into and it like took really seriously. Are you telling me now that if you wouldn't want to watch loads of people in ball gowns absolutely hammering into each other? Oh, then- I do pay-per-view. Like, get Eddie Hearn in. That's, I think that's where Rose of Tralee has been going wrong. Like, Dana I think we're White. workshopping something here that could be really good. Like, I'd watch it. The Bros of Tralee. Oh. It could be done. I think it could be... RTE. I know you're in a bit of trouble at the minute. <laughs> we'll do it for We've free. We've got some good ideas. Honestly, I will set up that boxing ring for free. We'll Truly, make it happen. Yeah. Look at anyway, me. talk to me about Bialta now. What is it? What's what's going on here at this point? The, the what they the aim of the tournament is is to find like the best martial arts artist and trim which I don't know but for some reason the town is enamored with this. They're like this is the one thing that they have. It's like have you ever heard of the Mary from Dunlow? Vaguely, yeah. It feels like that where it's like something that a small town is obsessed with that is for some reason given massive um, like priority over everything. Okay. But it feels like this is kind of like the same thing except it's a bare knuckle fighting with no yeah. rules uh, martial arts uh, or mixed martial arts. It might be the first instance of mixed martial arts ever. This mm. might have been preceded the UFC. This might be the most influential film in sporting history. I think so, yeah. I think that's not an that's not an understatement whatsoever. <laughs> not the hottest of takes. Um <laughs> but then uh the uh Bennett then decides that he's gonna enter the tournament. Um because the the monk is like, you should probably, you know, you should do this too, because you need to stop this gang from taking over the town. Yeah. Basically. So the gang are after him all the while he's like shagging Nicola. And <laughs> then on the other side of things, the monk is do, like the basically karate kidding him and like he's Jimmy yes. turns up in the forest and he's like marching he's like tell me about my dad and he's like no we have to and the monk is like no we have two spin kicks today like that's literally <laughs> one scene it's it's I can't it, this film is so funny I can't jumping over like logs and stuff and like punching like through the air and all, lots of shadow boxing happening a lot of uh, and there's like that like 
kind of like New Hope style shot of him like just like throwing kicks into the sunset. Just like it's cinema. To me, that it's is perfect. cinema. Yeah, no, to, it's perfect. To me, that is cinema. Um, but then he and also I would kind of touch on the, the vest already. I think I would genuinely wear a lot of the things that he's wearing. I think he's that I He's very well dressed. He's very well dressed. Very well dressed. It's very it's given toll of vintage. It's yeah, given proper. Like- <laughs> It's very like, do you know what I mean? Like you'd probably get that shirt for like sixty quid in. Trying nine to come back now. around, like you know what I mean? They really are. When he's and he's with Nicola as well, he's very he can be, get very sharp, like. And then yeah. other times he's just in like polo shirts and the highest waisted tra- highest waisted trousers I've ever seen. <laughs> and the collar like popped up to the nines. Like, it's, it's properly like they look like mufflers at one point, like like oh, the, like a, like a spoiler so on a car. Sexy, I love it. <laughs> anyway, never mind the dress sense. Never What's mind. going on with Bial tonight? He has a lot going on. The love. The life, the passion, yeah. the violence. Mm-hmm. It's all starting to spill over. What it, happens? It is all starting to spill over. So then he makes his way to, to ease the tension of all of this. He makes his way to the bar, to the local bar in town, which he doesn't realise is run by the gang. Oh, and I hate that. How, how, don't you just hate it whenever you're trying hate, to yeah. have a quiet pint and then it turns out that your father's murderer's pub is the only place that you can go for a drink. So annoying. That happens to me all the time. Yeah, same. It's really, really inconvenient. And in several towns as well, for some reason. <laughs> for some reason, loads of towns have people who have murdered members of my family. <laughs> Weird. I, yeah, so strange. But he does, he pulls out one of the, the, the most ridiculous stunts of the film where he goes up to your boys or whatever and they're pushing him like, not open tonight or whatever. And then he suddenly remembers his dad's murder. And for some reason, that pushes him to double kick the two boys standing outside the bar and it's just like it basically does like the splits in the air and it's both so the boys like, like all like ridiculous um, and then he does loads of punching and kicking or whatever um, and then leads into the bar fight scene which is probably the peak of the film I would okay. say I would say in, in terms of a pure stunt choreography uh, scene it's action as in purely as a an yeah, art form. I would argue that the scene after his kind of whatever fourth or fifth date with Nicola, where he's on the motorbike and he's very and he's standing yes. on the motorbike shooting at people, mm-hmm. really, really perfect. But see, you can you can fake all that. This is real. This is proper True. martial. Yeah. This is pure martial. This is the raid. Like this, this is, is proper. Yeah. This is the best martial arts you've ever seen yeah. in your life. Um, but has so many amazing bits as well. Like he sees a lad with a long ponytail, like sitting at the bar or whatever. And he's like, here, Barbie, why don't you apologize to this person that you, which I felt was very appropriate given uh, the, the you know, the recent Barbie phenomenon. Yeah. This man, that this man predicted it. I know. Um, to way what back does he know? What, what does, does Jimmy he, know? What does Jimmy know? Uh, and then a man pulls a gun on him at one point. Classic, yeah. And says, go away from you, you tully yard bastard or something like that. <laughs> and he like grabs the gun on it, like punches him in the face, whatever. And he says, fuck you and your gun. <laughs> Which I think, you know, that it brings out an anti-gun sentiment is pretty good. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the message is not to do violence. A lot of positive messaging. If you go back to the scene in Landis with Nicola, like pro-feminist, absolutely. Of course, absolutely. Yeah. Listen. Speaking against misogyny. Yeah. yeah. Don't be at it. Listen. Yeah, don't, don't. <laughs> That's the misogyny. If, don't be at it. You if, you to, if you take anything from this podcast, it's if you're at misogyny, just don't be at it. Don't be at it. Cut it out. Like, come on. Come on. Why is up? Why is up? Please stop being misogynistic. For God's sake. Um, but it's ridiculous. It's uh, like at that scene, and there's like like there's a uh, cue balls being thrown around, and there's um, it's just like I just can imagine because you've been in small town pubs, like you've mm. been in wee tiny ones. Like, mm. can you imagine if something like that broke out in your local? Like, like can you imagine the, that would be fucking that would be the talk of the town, truly, yeah, for years, yeah, for absolute years. Even oh, it would be on Cove open discussion page so fast. Oh, you have no idea. It would have been on Yik Yak. Yeah, it, it would have been on uh, Johnny All Daily. Yeah, it, it would have been in all the community groups, being like, "Here, does anyone see? <laughs> does anyone see we Jimmy Bennett just?" If the message would come into your family group chat and it'd be forwarded many times at the top, like, <gasps> oh that's, yeah, you'd know, grainy yeah. Nokia yeah. video footage to to get it out. Um, following this is the scene where he's cutting the cocaine with the Dunn Stores card, which I think is probably the best use of a Dunn Stores card. In cinematic history, mm-hmm. arguably. Yeah. If anyone can name any other time that a stunt store card has been used in a better way. HelloFlopCulture at gmail.com. Please Pl- get in touch. Please. Please. Uh, uh, we need an account of every time a Dunn Store's uh, <laughs> account has been, a Dunn Store's card has been used to uh, make uh, a film experience. Yeah. And a big movie it. for Irish retail. A in a lot of ways. Landis, yeah. Dunn Stores, local pubs, like... Honestly, I'd say pubs were dying and, and shops were dying to be a part of Fatal Deviation. Yeah. 
I Truly. Think, I think Super Value needs a, a Kung Fu movie. Yeah. I feel like when I go in there, I need to see someone getting beaten up. Like, <laughs> I, think, I think that's the one thing that shop is missing. To encourage me, to encourage you to shop and save. Switch and save. <laughs> like, you better switch and save. <laughs> Don't you dare not you switch and save. You fucking better switch and save. <laughs> But Mikey Graham is is the man taking the cocaine and he's very angry that James P. Bennett is, uh, you know, taking part of this. And he says the line about you made me look bad and that's not good. So he sends him uh, a note uh, and they open it up in the forest and it says, loose or else. (laughs) Which they obviously meant to say lose or else. But they had so much time and so, like, a film takes a lot. Like, I know that it was all voluntary and that your man was young and like, well, the main star was... like... 10,000 pounds to make. Yeah. Which is yeah. not huge money. No. Huge but, money at the time for them probably, but like yeah. enough money to pay someone a tenner to be like, your only job is to read this note before it's in shot and just spell check it, okay? Just please, just that. Uh, but Loose no. or else. Loose oh my God. or else. And he's very distraught about this because it's all over Nicola. Once again, it's all about the romance. Yeah. It's all about, this is a film about love, I think. That's my hot yeah. take. The power of love. Yeah. Um, it's a curious thing. But, power of love and martial arts. <laughs> and if you love martial arts, how far you can go. Yeah. Um, but he starts daydreaming, then he's walking around, he's daydreaming, and he starts daydreaming about the ride. Wait, actually, okay, I need to interrupt here, because sorry, at this point, Nicola has been like ki- oh, sorry, kidnapped. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because he sicked all the boys. Michael Graham, not specifically Michael Graham, but Michael Graham's character, <laughs> has sicked all the boys on Jimmy. Jimmy has again murdered some of them probably violently injured others he's in the forest of the monk and he reads this note and he's like fuck what am I going to do so he starts strolling around Uh, Mikey has also kidnapped Nicola at this point and is keeping her in a caravan somewhere right Mm -hmm. and is basically the note is the implication that it's like if you don't lose I'm going to off Nicola right so he starts wandering around and obviously he's very conflicted like what's he going to do and then it cuts to these like flashbacks where he's do you think he's riding Nicola or is he thinking about riding Nicola? Because bear in mind, mm. 30 minutes previous, he's turning to Nicola and going, tell me about yourself. And this is a sex positive podcast. You can have sex with people whenever you want, whether you know them or not. But Hugh, I have question marks, right? I have question marks. It, 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 it's very intimate. It, it's very all of a sudden. Because oh, one no. minute he's high kicking, the next minute it's she's just, high something else. You know what I mean? Like it's... <laughs> <laughs> Once, at one moment he's, he's Keen looked he, over at one point and he's like what the fuck are you watching I was like I can, there's no time to explain at, at one moment he's in the dragon at the next moment he's oh. just oh, it, it gets very and like real close shots of his like big sweaty head it's just, not an implication like they are riding like they no, want no, no. you to know that they are riding no. have ridden will be riding at some point I have seen porn with more subtlety <laughs> Then what is going on in that scene? I have seen genuine... <laughs> Maybe this isn't therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just sitting Thank on a very... Thank you for sharing, but... No, but it is. It's so intimate out of nowhere, like, and like yeah. the hands going up the back and everything like this. But that's a good question. Is he daydreaming about it or is it a previous memory do you know uh, yeah I kind of took this previous memory but as I'm sitting here with you now I'm like maybe he was just maybe he's just thinking about it do you think that she was still wearing the Londis outfit whenever they came in do you think she and he was like no no keep the apron on no keep it on no please the deli hair in it keep it on (laughs) it stays on I want to know where the biscuits are please (laughs) take 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 me me to the fry light (laughs) take me to the fry light Anyway, okay. Oil me up. Moving (laughs) along. He's thinking about this. He's daydreaming about it. He's daydreaming about it, whatever. And he comes to the conclusion that like, this love is too powerful. Mm -hmm. He has to compete. He has to compete. But But he's also still convicted about his dad. He's like, what the fuck is going on with my dad? Because this is, he goes back to the monk and is like, tell me about my dad. And and the monk is like, no. There's this whole other training montage thing again. Mm -hmm. Into the wee hours. Yes. With him paying the bagpipes. Fuck me, I forgot about the bagpipes. Him playing the bagpipes. Oh my god. I feel god. that's important that he walks through the forest blasting bagpipes to, to inspire him. I don't know. It was very... Do you, this is, I actually don't know if you do this or not. Have you played Dungeons and Dragons? No. Okay. Because there's a there's a role in Dungeons and Dragons called the Bard where you okay. literally play instruments to give inspiration to people. Yeah. So it felt like he was barding it up. It was given that vibe, okay. It, it was given barding. Now, well, I, he certainly was um, inspired. Very heavily yeah. inspired. But then we'd find out about the ringer. There's a, a big bad boss that he has to beat at this Balthony tournament who's called the most on-the-nose the name of any bad guy in any action film or any martial arts film his name is Siegel <laughs> and it's very obvious like the whole thing like as like we said before like he's trying to be Jean-Claude Van Damme whatever and he has to beat Siegel as in very close ah. 
Oh, I'm only getting it now. Are you only getting it now? Can you explain it to any, everyone else in For the class? For anyone else who isn't seeing the point, uh, the big martial arts, the two big martial arts heroes of the 90s were Jean-Claude Van Damme and Steven Seagal, who famously spent a lot of time in, in Hong Kong and who did all, all of these kind of Haikido movies and mm. all this kind of stuff or whatever and so the big bad guy that they need to beat is a lad called Seagull that's genius who, sorry I'm nearly sure, certain is always wearing sunglasses as well much yes. like how Steven Seagal yeah. is constantly wearing sunglasses um, and this is only after like you know like Under Siege came out like a few years before this and all that kind of crack like so it's very much like we I'm going to show that I'm better than Steven Seagal which is a pretty hot take mm. for a 22 year old lad from me to be making um, we uh, all should have that level of confidence I think I mean in fairness he never was as bad as you know like Seagal has got some pretty bad takes recently yeah so I feel like I would probably rather uh, pen Bennett in mm. the if I had to pick to watch a film between the two if I had to pick between watching a James P. Bennett movie and watching a Steven Seagal film then I'd probably 900% of the time choose to watch Fatal Deviation yeah once again yeah um, but then we get to the tournament, mm. which is obviously the most dramatic point of the film and very tense, high action, high octane. There is a former All-Ireland football player in the background at one point. Who is this guy? Do you know him? It's Graham Garrity, okay. who, who has won minor teams. The Graham Garrity. Adam Graham is Garrity. incredulous. Adam is incredulous. Graham. The biggest enemy of Dublin GAA from the 90s to the early 2000s. Graham Garrity, who is a, uh, an, who was an absolute monster on the pitch, is also an absolute monster in the fighting ring, uh, which is full of random people in the town, which also, I don't know if you noticed this, whenever it like, it cuts around to different shots of people, of them fighting, whatever, and the size of the crowd changes. Yes, and like, yeah, and yeah, people yeah. disappear. So it looks like the fight's been going on for hours and people are like, oh, Jesus, right, I'm going to pop out. <laughs> I'm going to pop out for a sandwich I'll now. come back just, for the last one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, come on, like, I can't be hanging around for this. But it's like, it's like amid the same fights as well sometimes. So these fights must be going on for, for hours. Yeah. Just absolutely, like, like proper, I don't know if you know, like like, like the history of like, like wrestling or whatever like like amateur wrestling and pro wrestling or whatever mm. but like how fights would go on for like you know like 16 hours at some points or whatever like you know like proper like um, and people just trying to pin each other down like I feel like it was very similar to that um, so lots of styles being covered there's like massive lads uh, like throwing wee fellas around there is like other boys who are also able to do kung fu or whatever I think it's basically just your man's mates who are also in like whatever kung fu school that 100%, he was in 100% yeah just trying to throw off all their, their moves or whatever um, but they're getting brutalized they're mm. getting out they're like boys being thrown against walls boys being thrown against hay bales because the thing is full of hay bales it's also all being held in the monastery which I don't know like We've had loads of weird community stuff going on in like our chapel and stuff. Never a kung fu tournament. I don't know if you can relate to that. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think so. Nothing, no. nothing close. No blood, no blood sports in the. No, in, in not the court. familiar with. But again, helloflapculture@gmail.com. It will all be ha- handled very delicately. <laughs> but I would just like to know, and I would like photos, please. Thanks. If anyone knows of any Hunger Games style tournaments <laughs> happening in a community center in <laughs> Bell Mullet at some point, <laughs> please invite me and Hugh. Thanks. Oh, we'd love to go. Yeah. We could do great commentary on that. I think so, yeah. And, uh, I mean, we'll have to practice for whenever we do our Rules of Trilly boxing. We have uh, a lot on, Hugh. Uh, we're filling up the calendar fairly quickly. Like, know. how are we going to be able to do everything? Oh, I don't know. And, I don't fit, know. Fit, and maybe, you know, maybe we'll film the sequel to Fatal Deviation at some point as well. Who knows? Don't tempt me. Don't threat <laughs> me with a good time, Hugh. <laughs> but, but they do the tournament and the tournament goes on for ages. Yeah. Absolutely ages, whatever. Uh, and James Bennett is, you know, he's, he's struggling a wee bit or whatever, but he, fi- he makes his way to the end. And he then faces off against Siegel and he's getting his arse handed to him. It's proper like David and Goliath style, whatever. Mm. This man has just back from Hong Kong. Why was he in Hong Kong? It's never explained. Never explained. Never explained. I think he was just on his holidays. Yeah. I think I think he was just there to collect. Classic holiday destination, Hong Kong. Uh, have you not had Hong Kong on your sky scanner whenever you're looking to see one of the potential places to go? Can't say I have. No, no, can't say. Honeymoon potential? <laughs> I think so. Maybe, yeah. I'll talk about it again. We'll see. <laughs> I think that'd be a great little couples retreat thing to yeah. do. The pair is learning how to do Absolutely, karate together. Yeah. I'm telling you. That could be interesting, yeah. Arguments would be end in a very interesting way. I'm doing the dishes. Uh, <laughs> Smashed. <laughs> Smash. But he, he's about to lose. And then your man starts just saying one word over and over again. Fatal deviation. Fatal deviation. Fatal deviation. Fatal deviation. Over and over again. 
I didn't actually know what fatal deviation was until last night. Mm. I didn't actually know what it was. I thought it was just a funny name. Um, and just like, or like two rant, like someone like name generator style. Like, yeah. Like Childish Gambino, Wu-Tang Clan style. Yeah. Like what is the most Kung Fu thing I can think of or whatever. Or, or if I could make death and maths come together. Um, but it turns out that it's an actual technique in martial arts where it's like punch into the left. I watched loads of Americans from like 2007 do videos on this uh, one in research for this clip. Incri- I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Listen, this is the commitment that I've made to learning about this film. Um, and he pulls out his fatal deviation. That's not a euphemism. He literally pulls out whatever <laughs> fatal deviation he's going to be doing. And uh, and he beats uh, Siegel, uh, beats Steven Seagal. And without a moment's notice, he like leaps over this fella that's sitting on a hay bale to get and try and chase the boys down in Mikey's gang because he's like right I've already won this I need to get Nicola now yeah time to save Nicola when does he have the epiphany about his dad I, that it was the, the 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 boss lads and also sorry kind of a grim death he like he beheaded him like, he beheaded sorry him. I don't mean to laugh he beheaded but like it's he, just he has like a samurai sword and it's just this it's, it's so sorry good. it's bananas no because it's, it's still your man is still old whenever they don't age him down yeah, it's, not, don't. It's, it's not like De Niro or whatever or in the Irishman or something like that they like it's just him still being old whatever they didn't have the de-aging technology at that point at that point listen if failed deviation was made now mm. imagine what could have been done the CGI alone <sighs> on some of those scenes would have been absolutely incredible but he like in, you can see him in the film very slowly bringing down whatever the toy samurai sword is <laughs> down towards his head. Also, it keeps cutting to the dad and he's just like waving his hands around. Yeah. Just like doing pure like Tai Chi yeah. stuff or whatever. But it kind of looks like he's just like washing a car and like, you know, and like doing like weird prayer stuff mm. and all that's going to crack. Um, I don't believe for a second that he actually knew what he was doing. I think they were just like, just do some Kung Fu shit yeah. there now and just hope for the best. Just move your hands. Yeah. Just move your hands. Just keep going like wax on wax off over yeah. and over again uh, but yeah he gets decapitated in front of his son which is a pretty brutal way to watch your your dad go yeah not great but he never quite sees the face of your man yeah he never quite and I think it's right before the tournament that he cops that like that his dad was decapitated yeah like, which is kind of something that you wouldn't want to forget like you no know, you don't you can't really forget something no, like that no not really I'd like no. to think if my dad lost his head I mean my dad loses his head at me all the time but I would but he wouldn't but I'm sh- <laughs> Um, but if it was to literally happen like that I'd hope that I would remember it pretty detailed way Um, but he couldn't remember the face of the man so he goes to run after which then precedes the greatest motorbike scene potentially in film history I'm saying a lot of firsts and bests in this film but I mean every last one of them Uh, because it's a bit where they all suddenly have guns as well which he explicitly said that he wouldn't want to do but then he's also a crack shot at it out of nowhere so I don't know what training he was doing outside of trim to be able to shoot so well. I mean, it was the 90s. Suspicious, yeah. Very suspicious. Mm. I don't know where he was at. I don't know what he was doing, what school he was at, that they were like, all right, by the way, also, here's a few guns for you. <laughs> Enjoy. Have at it. Yeah. Have at it. And we're going to train you how to use them while standing on a motorbike. Um, because some of the lads get brutally murdered in that. Like, yeah. As in, like, a boy, like, flops out of a car. Um, there's some, like, light little crashes or whatever uh, on the motorbikes. But he's standing on the bike for a good, like, 30 seconds. And I don't know how good your balance is. Not good. I could never, ever in my life do as much balancing as that man. And steering at the same time. I'm imagining him like subway surfering his way around <laughs> Trim on the motorbike. He was totally wasted. He should have been like an evil Knievel type. Truly, I yeah. missed his calling. He really did. Absolutely did. Oh. Um, but then we get to, he then steals, a, or no, before he even steals a car, he, there is a, a scene in it with a bathtub. Yeah. And I feel like, Again, another thing I wasn't expecting from this mo- movie, full frontal nudity. <laughs> and on YouTube. On YouTube. On There's no effort made. Like, it's just full Mickey, like. <laughs> Kung, Kung Don't Fu Mickey. Don't that. It's not, Don't, if no, you knew the context of the scene, it's. Well, what is explain, the context? What? Explain. But there what? is no context, well, but explain anyway. So, from what I've heard, before we get into what the actual scene is, from what I have been told and what the rumours are, is that your man, your man who is who gets his, his Mickey out for the sake of fatal deviation, uh, was a man who owned a field that they were allowed to film in. And he was like, yeah, I'll do something for the movie. And they were like, we have an idea. Now, if someone pitched this idea to me, I'd be like, fuck right off. I am not doing this. Uh, but somehow he agreed. And it comes out of nowhere. With that cheery music out of nowhere, love, love and survive out of nowhere. Man wearing a, like a leather cowboy hat. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, white white fronts. Yeah. Nothing else. Yeah. Absolutely nothing else. Walks out of a caravan. Sunglasses, sorry. He's also wearing, he's got a bit of decency. Yeah. He's, got, he's wearing his sunglasses as well. Uh, it's like implied because you see the caravan that it's somewhere in the area where they're also keeping Nicola. But we no. haven't met this character before no. at all. Ever. Bef- before this point. Never not once. At all. And he struts over to a bathtub, which is just outside the caravan. Built over a fire, though, I think. Yeah. Pure like, like Follocks Fia vibes. <laughs> like real like medieval torture yeah. like vibes or whatever. I don't know if I'd want to bathe in that. No. I don't know. Like if I was like, not that I would be drowning people usually, but like if I was going to be doing it, like I would don't Forever, think I... you, I would hope. I, I'll say usually for now. Mm, okay. But, but I wouldn't want to then bathe in it as well. Jeez, that's where we drowned Mickey. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose I haven't washed in a while. I better <laughs> throw myself in as well. So he's in this like fire bathtub or whatever, or he goes in and he just fully just pulls his jocks down, but keeps the cowboy hat on for some... Yeah, yeah sense of decency of course yeah yeah um, and gets modesty in, a modesty yeah exactly listen but he just full langer full listen full fatal deviation is on show for everyone to see oh. full karate kid full uh, under siege just. Just every every euphemism for a, for a, a kung fu film that he yeah. could do but he gets into the bath um, and at this point Jimmy has stolen a car and is driving there and somehow crashes the car but the crash is real. I didn't realise this until I read after, which is nuts. The man literally could have killed himself <laughs> for the sake of this one scene where he actually, I don't even know if they were planning to have the crash. Like it proper like turns into a ditch. Oh, like he like spins that thing. Like pure Donegal Rally style, mm. like bap bap, like I'm going down like style. He fully flips the car and this is enough to get your man to, in shock and horror, Leap out of the bath once again, showing everything. Mickey flying, yeah. Mickey flying. Mickey to the wind. I think that was his name actually in the Mickey film. Mickey flying, yeah. Correct. Mickey flying is actually my drag king name. Um, <laughs> but he uh, he has to run back to the caravan, but still completely nude, and the man is never seen again. Never seen again. Never ever seen again. That is the scene that we would set to time by Inception with. And Perfect. we'd watch the whole thing in slow motion. Yeah. And it would swell as he was coming out of the bath. Of course, yeah. And as Mickey is slowly flapping in the wind. Uh, but the cowboy hat stays perfectly on. Yeah. Which is just like, what was, so obviously I had seen it like how many, I've seen that scene, I don't know how many times. When you first watched it, what was, what was your impression? I just couldn't get over the Mickey. Like I was like, I just Most people can't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, what is this film? I was just, and then I was like, have I not been paying attention hard enough? Have I missed this character? And then when I looked into it, it was like, oh no, I haven't at all. Like it's, did you think it's you'd fine. fall asleep at some point during the film and just missed out on... Yeah, like, I was like, what? Mikey Graham being like, now Shane, you can't be showing your Mickey around all the time or whatever. Like, it's like a deleted scene that was cut out. And then I was just like, is it just like kind of hapless bodyguard vibes? And he was just like, I don't know, wanting to relax outside? I don't know. I don't... There was a lot going on in that scene because obviously like the car explodes as well. Classic. And that, I think that's the one bit of CGI that's in the film when the car like blows up or whatever. And it is fantastic because, so good. because the explosion happens but you can see the car is still totally fine <laughs> when has, like they don't cut they don't cut quite in time so you can just see that the car is actually hasn't changed at all and he says he's on the way to the car and he goes well there goes the license yes comedy perfect he, listen that man knows his, his one liners truly absolutely truly um, which then proceeds a massive shootout yeah. which is the uh, like out of nowhere, this man is sliding down hills. He's like tricking boys, whatever. It's pure Metal Gear Solid vibes where it's like, I'm going to sneak around like over. He like leaps over a lorry at one point or like leaps over a truck. Yeah. And is then just going like, quah, quah, which is my impression of what karate sound. I think that's what his impression is. No, it is. He makes like. a lot of noises. Yeah. There's a lot of grunting in this film. Yeah. A lot think, of grunting. Do you think that led into your attraction into him? No, the grunting turn. I wish he did it quieter. <laughs> I, I might go back and watch it on mute later was for that, my own personal enjoyment. For your own person, was that your ick? Is that a ick of yours? Yeah, kind of. Do you know? But it's the same when like lads are in the gym and they're like, do you mm-hmm. know, like huffing and puffing when you don't have to. Nice, I know yeah. sometimes it's hard when you don't have to though. When it's a performance. Yeah. Anyway, a few words. I'm getting on to my own personal grievances, but listen. Shoot out. We get to the caravan. We, we get, get Nicola. We, we get, have Mikey. We have Mikey, which is uh fantastic scene of drama tension he hits her at one point which is the the sign where it's like okay this lad has to go uh which then whatever all the fight car you've been doing before this whatever 
None of it has been like amazing, but mm. it's been like like there was some semblance of an idea there. This one felt very ramshackle, just like throwing slaps and yeah. like trying to like you know move him out of the way and stuff, whatever. And then out of nowhere, there's like a hard cut to like a very zoomed in shot of the tomb and he just snaps snaps <laughs> like, his neck like proper just like <laughs> like really just tears the the head off listen look I think I can't even think it just literally just was like I don't know where I get sometimes the film just gets hyper violent out of nowhere and I'm uh, like where uh, where are the police? Where is, why is why is no I, one like a lot of people dying lately? A lot of lads just I, not coming to work. I was thinking this. And I, I know a lot of them are criminals, so it's like whatever. They're not checking into work. They're not stamping in whatever. But like, surely I, someone's at home being like, mm, they've been out a while. They're I, dead in the field. I have seen Garda press releases in Donegal about missing AirPods. I have seen on Donegal Daily people being like. This uh, uh, air, pair of AirPods is missing. If you can bring them into your local guard station, whatever, oh you can find God. them, whatever. Boys are being feckin' murked left and right left here, whatever. Right. And there is no sense of any sort of commitment. No wonder the gang is running it. I, yeah, you know truly. What? If I was in trim and there was no guards, I probably would look to Mikey Graham and the solicitor for a bit Mikey of... Mikey Graham and the boys. Mikey and the boys zone. Yeah. The boy, oh, very good. Yeah, yeah. they my fa- yeah. Uh, I think at the very start of the film as well. It's like and from the Irish rock band, and then in two words, boy zone. <laughs> they were very much like this was this was how early, but there was no branding at no. all. Very. This is no. post double dungery, double denim yeah. on the late light. Just like what a choice to make though. Like, rock you, band. That's interesting. I would say they're rocking out. You, you two found rocking like <laughs> Ireland's greatest rock band. Yeah, boy zone. Yeah, easily. Thin Lizzy. That's a true sentence, yeah. (laughs) But it it then ends, well, it doesn't end though, because it has a a, a warm embrace with Nicola, which I don't know about you, but like if I watched someone murder someone, probably the last thing I'd want to do is then hug them. I think it'll give me the ick, girls. That would be the ick. Girls, you know what gives me the ick when he murders people in front of me? Hate that. There are two things that you don't like, and it's lads grunting in the gym and murder. People, People get murdered in front of me, yeah. That is the only two things. Out of everything. Is that too much to ask, girls? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. But yeah, they have this warm embrace Mm -hmm. and then it cuts to a a few days later, a day later, Mm -hmm. where they're having another roadside picnic date. She, listen, she needs to stop agreeing to them. That's my hot take. Yeah. I think. Because nothing good ever happens out of there. There surely is a restaurant in Trim, you know what I mean? Or a cafe. There has to be anything. Soup, sandwiches, Londis. Surely Londis has something and that like, you know, like a wee cafe in the side or something like that. I don't know. It was the 90s who we have to... Oh, it was. God love them. Far from brunch we were here and all that jazz, you know. <laughs> no avocado toast no. to be had. Anyway, they're at the side of the road on a date when they are confronted. Confronted. By a- who? By the dad. By dad. Mikey Graham's dad. Yep. Who, by the way, stops on an, un- an unimaginable level of riz from uh, Jimmy Bennett where he's like, Go on, close your eyes. Like that's his line to try and get the shift, which I don't know if that would work on you. I don't think it would work on me. I don't, yeah, I don't think so. No. But now I will say they're at like, this is their sixth date and they've been through a considerable amount of trauma. Well, actually no, the trauma would make me definitely not want to close my eyes. And also they've already like road and stuff. Like there's like, a, yeah. it, it, it sometimes feels like, but again, have they? This is probably the biggest mm. what if in the whole film. Is how did they actually have sex? Have their old. Um, but the dad appears with a shotgun to his head, and your man Jimmy's face is the most like cartoon, like oh, I've been caught, like face whatever. But he's got a shotgun blasted to his like to his head or whatever, and he says the the dad says the line, uh, "You killed my son. Now I'm going to kill you, just as I killed your father." Uh, and I feel like I actually gave it too much emotion there because your man just very plainly is like you killed my son and now I'm going to kill you just as I killed your father (laughs) and Jimmy like slaps the gun out of the way and suddenly has it very quickly and your man is lying on the ground and then he says you killed my father now I'm going to kill you just as I killed your son bang (gasps) blasts him oh blasts him and then immediately gets a hug again from a, this man's head has been blown off. There are, there are bits of strawberry, bits of brain, there's, there's, a half drank bottle of wine and Nicola's like, oh, and they just hug. I'm like, again. He's not soliciting anything Road watch assistance, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> anything, the AA. Someone get the shovel, is like there, it's... Is there no one driving around? Is there no Is there no farmer in a field, like, being like, Jesus, there's a lot of commotion coming out from around that corner, like. Um, but thus ends the film except with a like six minute like outtake reel with that one 
fucking song over and yeah. over again then. But which isn't made very obvious, I will say, because initially I was like, is this extra footage? And then I was, I was like, oh no, it's like funny bits, it's bloopers, okay. Yeah. But it shows like, it shows them being like, this was a real crash. And it shows them, I think one of the lads like, like concusses himself. Yeah, the Jimmy, the- yeah it's, it, like Jimmy comes out of the crash and he's like kind of bleeding. Like, yeah, and it's yeah. the same with that other lad who concusses himself. It's like, oh my God. Like boys were actually injured for this. And as well, like, what needs to kind of be appreciated. This movie was made entirely voluntarily mm. as well. Like they had like whatever money that they got, they robbed off the solicitor to let him be in it. But like everyone who's working on the film is doing it with no, like for no money whatsoever. Mm. And they're proper like injuring themselves or whatever, like throwing themselves off cliffs and banging their heads off walls and stuff like that. Like it is kind of to be commended, but at the same time, it produced arguably one of the worst films ever made. But on that, is it... Like, in my opinion, it's so bad, it's good. So how does it compare to the same f- films of that genre, like The mm. like the Room? So I would say, personally, because I, I love those kind of films, and I, I was actually between this and the uh, 1994 Street Fighter film. I don't okay. know if you've seen it. Which, oh, no, please come back and do that. Oh, it's it based is. on the game, like. It's based on the game. I fucking loved the Raul game. Raul Julia's last cinematic film, like, before he passed away or whatever, and he is just a monster of an actor in this awful film. Jean-Claude Van Damme is in it, actually. I feel there's a lot of, a lot of him. All roads lead back to Jean-Claude Van Damme. Everything, all roads lead back to JCVD. Mm. Uh, so it was between those two films. I will say The Fatal Deviation is easily one of the best, the most enjoyable out of those films. Because like, I've watched Birdemic, I've watched Sharknado, I've watched The Room, I've watched like loads of those movies, whatever. And like some of them are lovely or whatever. And there's some of them are like really, um, are very silly. But like there's nothing as consistently enjoyable as uh, Fatal Deviation, I don't think. Because it just has a bit of everything. Mm. Like, some of those other movies, like, like Birdemic opens with, like, 10 minutes of nothing but driving. Like, that's a hard sell to someone to be like, oh, no, it's funny that it's bad, but it's yeah. like, but it's like nothing but, How like... How do you the capture their attention, especially because you're watch, usually watching these movies in a group setting as well? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and it's, like, like nine minutes of just a car and, like, one music thing looping over and over mm. again. Like, so I think this is one that probably grabs you the attention the quickest. And as well, I find as well, this is my personal hot take, is that whenever those, um, like, sci-fi channel movies and those, like, straight-to-DVD movies and all those kind of stuff or whatever, whenever they start making sequels, they start becoming aware that they're bad and they start leaning into it too much. That's and what then, I'm going to check it out 100%. And the fun goes. Because yeah. it's like, no, no, you're aware of this now. Like, there was a bit of sincerity in this. This movie is so sincere. It's so sincere. Because he thought that like, that there were people in Hong Kong waiting for him, that this was sort of like his audition tape to be like a huge action star. So he, there is so much love going into this and there's so much work going into this and it obviously failed miserably. But you can see the like, kind of like proper sincerity that this man felt Mm -hmm. as he was making this movie. So I, yeah, I, it's fairly high ranked up there in terms of my favourite bad films ever. Yeah. And he did kind of get a break. He was in Jersey Boys. Yes. Uh, with Clint Eastwood he did I, th- I think he was supposed to appear in one of the Fast and the Furious movies I don't know if that ever happened <laughs> but he is on IMDb like if you look I, actually I'm going to bring it up here when you look at like the film titles that he's been in it's mm-hmm. all like a kick to kill and like <laughs> <laughs> Road to like Blackwater, Kickboxer, Retaliation. These are actual names now. Attrition, Final Kill, Seized, A Dangerous Date, uh, Kill Them um, All, uh, Swelter. Okay, that one doesn't fit with my joke as well, but anyway. Um, I mean, he, a, a deadly date or a final date sounds pretty accurate to what he's been doing. Like yeah. every, t- every time he went on a date with this woman, someone got kidnapped, someone got murdered, someone got... It was all goal. Maybe you should... Would you add that on your Tinder if that was your thing? Where you're like, I'll only take you out on picnic dates. And also someone might get murdered. Yeah, just FYI. I think it's good to give people a heads up, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, but with the photos is everything. It might be enough. People um, might ignore it. He, he was on about doing a sequel to this in 2020. Or oh, like yes. he he was posting about it on his Facebook page. He said it was going to shoot in Ireland in 2020 starring yours truly and a well-known international action star. And it was going to be called Fatal Deviation Krakatoa. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to punch that volcano. That's what he was going to do. He was Like... Going to- <laughs> What would you like a Final Deviation sequel to look like if it ever came to be? Final Deviation is a great name for it. Did I, I call it Final Deviation? Did, but that's a great name for it. Like, it would be kind of like a Passing of the Torch yeah. style movie. Maybe a young martial artist from Donegal is trying to find his way and meets a, an older monk that goes by the name of Jimmy Bennett who might have won a Baltimore Festival years ago. I'm not saying that it has to be me, but I'm just saying that maybe... I could probably see myself in a in a Fatal Deviation sequel. I think I could put myself in there. I think you're the right person for the job. You think I'm the right person for yeah, the job? Yeah, 100%. Um, I, I can't think of what, like, I want more from the monk. 
I want yeah. more. I want more. I feel like Nicola got a bad, a bad uh, rap. What's her story? Like how, I want her story before and her story as it could, like how do you stay in a relationship with Jimmy? You know what I mean? When he's like, I think he loves the karate and the kung fu more than her. Like, I think it's pretty clear from you know? all that. Yeah. I don't I, think you can have your cake and eat it like also, simply. Did he get away with murdering all those people? Because everyone Seems would know. It. Everyone would know, like, do you know what I mean? Like, everyone in the town would know who did it. Like, imagine finding all the bodies and they have very clear, like, martial arts related injuries, and they're like, "Who could have done this?" <laughs> martial arts related, in, like, the signs of like karate yeah, chops like, on the just, side of the neck. I don't know. I've never witnessed a martial <laughs> arts injury or been had one done to me. So I'm just assuming it's a lot of like hand marks, no? And like a and like a footprint directly. Yeah, in very the chest. pointed toes and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic form. <laughs> oh, I don't know. We shall see. Um, as you said, this is available to watch in full on YouTube, Fatal Deviation. Mm-hmm. Look it up. Yes. Um, Hugh, it's been such a pleasure. And we are, we have a list as long as our arm of things to come back and chat about. Mm-hmm. And we, I do want you to come back and do Street Fighter. Oh, so geez, thank you I'll very be in much. touch next season. Amazing. Where can people find you, listen to you, read the things that you do? <laughs> Where are you if people want more? I'll just give my full home address here now. Please, yeah. It's, PPS uh, number. Ele- uh, <laughs> no, I am found on joe.ie is where I do my most of my writing and video bits where I'm interviewing people and talking to people on the street. So if you actually, you might find me on Grafton Street or something like that with a microphone um, harassing the public. And For the love of God, just stop and answer his questions because yes. having been there doing the Vox Pops, oh, it's a hard life. It's such a struggle. Life. And sometimes you get free things. Sometimes you don't, but... Yeah, most times you don't. I mean, you do. You always you do, get free yeah, yeah. things. You Wink. get my time. Yeah. And what is more valuable than time? Truly. Um, you can then find me uh, on stage sometimes with uh, Gail Gary. Uh, a lot of these things are going to be Irish language content, which is great. I love Irish language content. And if you like Irish language content, then please check me out. Uh, we do a thing called Gail Gary, which is an Irish language stand-up show. We're performing at EP. That got announced like today, which is mad, uh, to read a press release and be like, oh wait, that's my name in there. Um, so we're performing at EP and we're also performing as the Chancellor, which is the Irish word for the Chancers. Uh, we do a podcast and we do live shows every now and then. We did one in Belfast there a few weeks ago and come to EP again there as well. And then on the socials, I'm on Hugh Carr on TikTok, which is pure handy and then for Twitter and Instagram I am Hugh Carr here and uh, just in case you weren't sure where I was mm. I wanted to make sure that people I knew a lad who tried to pretend like he did something similar and he put like ICI at the end of his name Patrick, I'm going to call him out right now Patrick Quinn who is one of my best friends he made his name on Twitter Patrick Quinnici because he loved Assassin's Creed and especially the Ezio Auditorio ones like the Italian ones okay. whatever and then a few years later he was talking to a woman and he was like oh no no it's like Patrick Quinn EC like French for here for here and I was like cop yourself on I was there before I, I know I know the, I know the lore I know the lore I know where this came from uh, so yeah Hugh Carr here on most things and then just Hugh Carr on TikTok why didn't you do Hugh Carr on Shaw <sighs> I oh, feck I'm going to have to change my whole brand top bro arm I had to bring it up Bay bro arm listen yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. that's it oh man oh I'm going to have to renounce the Irish language now yeah sorry about that I'm going to leave you and uh, <laughs> think about that but um, what a pleasure I can't wait to have you back Gurmila Malagos Hugh thank you so much for joining me at Flap Culture Towers Flap Culture Gurmila Malagos Woo Woo Thank you so much to Hugh for joining me. I will leave all of his links in the show notes if you'd like to follow him. Flop Culture is back next week. And I want to ask you, dear listener, do you have the power? Because I know someone that does. This has been Flop Culture. As always, thank you to Adam Shanahan for editing. I will see you next week. Bye-bye. (laughs) 